If you visit Buckingham Palace in London and look up, you will see a flagpole. If you see the Union flag flying from that flagpole, it means His Majesty the King isn't in residence. However, if you see this elaborate flag, it means that the King is inside the building. This type of flag is called a personal standard and is a common feature of European royalty. Each member of the British royal family has a personalised standard that only they have a right to fly. It tells people who they are and where they are, as for example, if the king is in an official car or on an official plane, his royal standard will be prominently displayed. These personal flags have a long history, going back to medieval times, when they were used as identification pennants by kings and aristocrats. So it is perhaps not surprising that the leaders of Nazi Germany decided to copy this tradition for themselves by using personal standards to be displayed prominently on buildings and vehicles they habituated and to be displayed at public events that they attended. Of course, the last German monarch, Emperor Wilhelm II, had a personal imperial standard that he displayed in a similar way. This, for example, is his car pennant, now preserved at Haus Dorn in the Netherlands. We also see here another type of standard, a military rank flag, that was also displayed on military staff cars he travelled in. Hitler, being of an artistic bent, naturally designed his own personal standard on taking complete control of Germany following the death of President Paul von Hindenburg in 1934, Hitler merging Hindenburg's office of president with his own office of chancellor to create the new office of Führer. In 1938, following the forced resignation of Field Marshal Werner von Blomberg, chief of the Wehrmacht and war minister, Hitler also assumed the title Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces. All of this is reflected in the Führerstandarte, the leader's flag, and consists of a black swastika inside a wreath of golden oak leaves, with a Nazi eagle at each corner, two representing the party and two the military. Many of these standards, of many different sizes, were manufactured for Hitler, and it is similar to the banner of the 1st SS Panzer Division Leibstandarte SS Adolf Hitler, though two of the eagles are different on the Hitler standard. As you can see, Hitler's personal standard was prominently displayed when he was out and about, in exactly the same manner as a monarch, and it was treated with the same reverence and respect. From 1941 onwards, following Rudolf Hess's one-way holiday to Scotland, Hermann Göring was Hitler's second-in-command, and also the leader of the Luftwaffe, the Air Force. In 1938, Hitler had promoted Göring to the rank of Field Marshal, and initially he used this command flag. The crossed Field Marshal's batons in the centre are embroidered copies of his real Field Marshal's baton, which is seen here now in a US museum. And below the Luftwaffe eagle and batons is Göring's World War I Pour le Merite, Imperial Germany's highest award that he received from the Kaiser due to his record as an ace fighter pilot. And from 1940, holder of a unique rank. Reichsmarschall. Göring's personal standard, this particular example captured at war's end on Obersalzberg by French troops and now on display at Les Invalides in Paris, incorporates several interesting images. The blue background is indicative of the Air Force, and in the corner of the standard are Balkan crosses of the style used by Luftwaffe aircraft. A gold Nazi eagle clutches a golden wreath and superimposed upon it are crossed Reichsmarschall's batons. And if you look at Göring's actual Reichsmarschall baton, which is currently at West Point Military Museum in the United States, this baton presented to him by Hitler in 1940, it is the same design. The distinctive white shaft made of elephant ivory, very obvious. Then a Nazi swastika is superimposed to finish. The most feared of the Nazi leaders, and really the number three man in the circle around Hitler, and towards the end of the war, perhaps the number two, was Reichsfuhrer SS Heinrich Himmler. 
Himmler's personal standard is by far the simplest of the Nazi leaders and the dullest by colour scheme. It consists of a simple black and white triangular pattern background, which was used by many different types of standards in Germany by both the party and the military, upon which is superimposed a silver SS eagle. It is in keeping with Himmler's less than flamboyant nature, and I think is the most ominous of all the Nazi personal standards. A person largely unknown to the general public, but one who increasingly wielded enormous power, was Hitler's gatekeeper and minister of the Nazi Party Chancellery, Martin Bormann. Bormann's standard is again strikingly simple, a red background drawn from the party flag, upon which is a wreath of silver oak leaves, and inside a silver party eagle. Bormann was greatly feared among those in the know including, it was said, even Himmler. He also controlled not only the Führer's daily diary and who had access to him, but also Hitler's vast personal wealth. This is Bormann's car, captured on the Orbis Altsberg, now in a private museum in Moscow. And his personal standard would have been flying from beside the bonnet as it wound its way up and down the mountain from Berchtesgaden to Orbis Altsberg, where Bormann was known not incidentally as Lord of Orbis Altsberg. This standard would have been flying from the front of the Mercedes limousine in which Reinhard Heydrich was travelling when he was mortally wounded in an SOE attack in Prague in 1942. Heydrich, Himmler's second in command, was called the Butcher of Prague for very good reason, a monster who terrorised the German-occupied Czech lands until he was killed. His standard is very similar to Hitler's, except a wreath of laurel leaves are in silver and only one Nazi eagle is displayed on it in the top left corner. Heydrich had his standard displayed everywhere, from his car to, as we see here, trips to the opera. Heydrich's successor as head of the Reich Main Security Office, that part of Himmler's SS Empire that controlled police and intelligence units and the Gestapo, was Dr. Ernst Kaltenbrunner. Kaltenbrunner adopted as his standard this, a golden police eagle and swastika set against the usual black and white triangular background found on so many Nazi and military personal or rank standards of the period. German Foreign Minister Joachim von Ribbentrop, judging by photographic evidence, appears not to have had a personal standard. Instead, he seems to have used the German national flag as his standard, which was, of course, his ministry's flag as well. Immediately below Hitler, who held the rank of Führer, were a series of Nazi leaders called Reichsleiters, or Reich leaders. Included among them were Martin Bormann, Josef Goebbels, the propaganda minister, Rudolf Hess, until he went to Scotland in 1941, Himmler, Robert Ley, chief of the German Labour Front, and Alfred Rosenberg, chief of the Nazi Party Office of Foreign Affairs. Some, like Himmler and Bormann, had, as we've seen, personal standards derived from other positions that they held. But a special Reichsleiter's standard was available, and many would have used this flag as their daily standard particularly on vehicles they were travelling in. It consists of a silver Nazi eagle, superimposed over a wreath of silver leaves, and the letters R and L, either side of the standard background. The Hitler Youth was under the command of the Reichsjugendführer, or Reich Youth Leader. The first to hold this office was Balder von Schirach, who was also a Reichsleiter in his own right. His successor was Arthur Axmann. This is the Reichsjugendführer's standard, incorporating a brown eagle clutching in its talons the lozenge-shaped badge of the Hitler Youth, set on a tan background, the brown coloration echoing the political colours of the NSDAP. The Nazi puppet leaders also got in on the act, having their own standards. Here is the personal standard of Anton Muzet, leader of the Dutch National Socialists of the so-called leader of the Dutch people under German control. The hand holding a bundle of arrows is a reference to the emblem of the Republic during the Dutch Golden Age. This standard was flown from Muzet's staff car. 
Many thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share, and also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below. Thank you.